much, Scott. Uh, and thank you to everyone else who made this event happen. I know that uh, these events don't magically happen, so I appreciate all the work that's gone into it. Um, as Scott mentioned, uh, I'm going to read tonight from uh, this new collection, Landscape of Light, um, uh, which reflects upon uh, landscapes. Uh, but uh, the twist is, is that they are landscapes uh, in American films. In the poems, I'm really interested in uh, exploring the American obsession with land and landscapes. Uh, of course, land is property. Uh, uh, it drives so much of uh, uh, American history. Uh, land is freedom, or is the idea of freedom. Land is the basis of a new self. Land is the basis of a new society. Uh, land is the measure of beauty. Um, for me, uh, all the great foundational American myths have to do with the land. Um, so I wanted to sort of think about those in, in this collection. One last note, uh, it's important to mention that you don't have to have seen the films to get the poems. Um, the poems present their own essential poetry. <coughs> so the first poem I'm going to read um, is called Scarecrow, um, uh, which is also actually the film's title. Uh, it's not a horror film. Um, uh, it refers to a 1970s road movie which for some reason um, has kind of fallen out of view. Um, uh, and the, the, the poem um, uh, is a good example of my method because really it just reflects upon a single image um, in the film that happens at the beginning of the film. Uh, it's a brief image. It's the image of um, uh, a tree on a hill um, with a fence about it. Scarecrow. Desert highway, long line of telephone poles climbing to a mountain range. What mountains are these? They're lovely and low, barren and laid back, with a blackness like that of the sky. But why is the sky purple black? Why is the one lone hill crowned by an oak tree fully spread? Why bound by barbed wire? Why fence a tree like that, a hill like that? It's openness we want, wanting to be elsewhere. Endless openness, endlessly beckoning, with no goodbyes, nothing indecipherable. The next poem is a prose poem. It's called uh, Letter to Martin Scorsese, Casino. Of course, this is not so much of a landscape, but a cityscape out of, out of Las Vegas in the desert. Letter to Martin Scorsese, one. When did flatness become a fabulation of futurity? Two. Do we still worship the old god of beauty, or have we created a new one, a divinity brutal as the desert, with a garishness as unrelenting as desert light? Three. Every morning, dawn hits the ochre desert with the force of a lost ideal. A wispy lavender rises off the desert floor, gauzy and ethereal, until the sun burns it off, leaving behind the day's hard edges. Four. Symmetry calls for harmony, and the idea of harmony haunts a highway-edged land semi-happy in its dissonance. Five. Was the arterial pulse of neon signs a kind of paradise? Desire lived there, signified by flamingo pink 
and lime green strips pulsating consistently in the night. Six. From the sidereal point of view at night, the city is a flat grid, a blackness twinkling with celestial lights, a vast and intense brightness, electric, imperial. Seven. It dazzled and it blinded. Its vast radiance shone clear on the stars. Eight. It was also this, a dark defile, a descent in which people died needlessly, pointlessly, painfully, in the unrestricted emptiness of a sunstruck day. Nine. All the glitz, the glam, the flash, the bland, the book, the big, the rat, the skin, the take, the heat, the hit, the juice, the mark, the piece, the pinch, the tail, the whack, the wire, the wise guy, the war, the war, the war. Ten. Measured against the immeasurable universe. No word is spoken or light. I'm going to read um, a couple of LA poems tonight, uh, again, Cityscapes. This one is called, You Think It's You, But It's Really Not, Training Day. The endless need to begin again. A white sun ascends a desert sky, perfect sheen of brightness on sun-drenched streets. This is the final recompense for the desire for paradise. Street after street of tacky shops and borderline lives hawking some other nation's trinkets. <coughs> Blare of hi-fi car stereos and car horns. Terror from anywhere. What perfect brightness. What peace we've made with it. Streets lead to other streets, railroad tracks, intersections, shimmer of heat and commerce, and a hopelessness that cannot be allowed full expression. Trains fly down their tracks, clacking rackety loud in their self-regard. In the distance, LA's skyscrapers await the time lapse white clouds. Once the sun reestablishes its preeminence, the city returns to its trades and its exchanges, its sovereign illegalities and illegal remedies. The future brought here goes everywhere at once. Bewildered by too much, the city changes, grows, becomes strange to itself. Highest noon is above, unmoving. Art Michelle Ravish, Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket, of course takes in uh, uh, the American experience, part of it, uh, during Vietnam, and then Vietnam. And this poem is as well. Men without fear make incalculable beauty. Through the ruined city, smoke billows out like a phantasm. It pours out of wallless structures, roofless temples, shell shop buildings, drifting out across the river, leaving behind statues of the river. Men that move through it know fates, angles, and trajectories, the paths of least resistance. 
From archipelagos of humiliation come the need to erase history, the need to live unburdened by the past, by the knowledge that cracks open the dynasties. When the entire purpose of death is unanswered, a simple freedom is obtained. Thought and action, the dream of a nation, become one. Pilgrim, ask now for the scribe to write that chronicle, the one embellished with fabulous ornamentation. A new empire acquires an insular one. When everything is clean and precise, the action will be beautiful. Uh, the last one for me tonight is the unregenerate who once wanted to be redeemed, Chinatown. A film about a town by Robert Town. A film about a town within a town, Chinatown. A film partially about a Los Angeles scandal in the early part of the 20th century. The story of the nefarious 1908 Owens Valley rape and scandalous San Fernando Valley land grab by speculators. A film about Jack Nicholson. A film about Hollis Mulray, a character derived from LA's real-life water engineer, William Mulholland, the general manager of LA's Bureau of Water Works and Supply. The name of the character, Hollis Mulray, a clever anagram for Mulholland. A film about, of course, Los Angeles in the 30s, a city of broad avenues, palm trees, green watered lawns, and silent mansions serviced by silent Chinese staff. A film about power, rape, and incest. About the courtliness of true decades. A film about the past never being past, about the way the present is just part of the revolution of the real of history, something we only gradually come to perceive. A film about the sadness of discovering that American democracy is a facade. A film about a Mexican boy who comes out of the dusk riding a palomino in a dried up riverbed delivering cryptic messages. A film about children who are lost and never find their way back. A noir film about other noir films, about moonless darkness and daytime dazzle on Los Angeles streets. <coughs> A film about Venetian lines and blind desire. A film about abandoned box springs, broken cabinets, and furniture detritus. Their brokenness somehow loving next to the mountains in the morning desert light. A film about never regretting what you do. A film about always regretting what you do. A film about what you can never do. A film about being lost between the desert and the sea. Thank you.